study with master notes again so today we will study mz3 british novel a portrait of the artist as a young man by james joyce here it is the technique unit 4 so detailed i will study and describe the key points and describe the notes so you will keep watching the channel from first to end so you will get important points and notes so please keep watching the videos from first to end so that you will get benefited so students so we will start unit 4 technique of a portrait of the artist as a young man so please please like share and subscribe this channel to get your desired questions and your key points and key notes okay so we will go unit 4 technique of the portrait as a artist as a young man so here it is a structure objective introduction variety of styles repetition symbolism stream of consciousness and epiphany linguistic features let us sum up questions and suggested readings here it is the objectives so every unit has its own objective so here it is also the unit 4 has its objectives that is a technique okay how technically james joyce has written the novel okay so our objective in this unit is to look at joyce technique in a portrait as you know all modernists attached a lot of value to technique the how of a work as distinguished from its what okay so how of a work as distinguished from its what the slogan make it new had a special significance for every modernist writer so joyce is no exception so here it is a modernist novel and make it new had a specific special significance so in this unit you will see how the stream of consciousness technique which has touched upon in the unit on context actually operates in a portrait you will also see the variety of styles used by joyce and become aware of the exploitation of repetition as a stylistic device so this section will cover repetition of image symbol and motif so here it is a very important chapter here it is a technique so in exam here it is a question also arises so what are the image symbol and motif of the novel or portrait of the artist as a young man by james joyce so narrate your answer so here it is the introduction in terms of influence exercised on future practitioners of his craft and in terms of range and audacity of experimentation joyce has been perhaps the tallest figure in modernist literature written in english okay so various audacity of experimentation so joyce as a prominent personality or joyce has been perhaps the tallest figure in modernist literature written in english the whole range of his stylistic daring becomes clear to one only after one has encountered ulysses and finnegan's wake as well but a portrait by itself is enough to stamp him as a dexterous user of english okay the whole range of his stylistic daring okay say uh, he uses his stylistic daring daringness in english words becomes clear to one only after one has encountered ulysses and finnegan's wake okay so one has encountered ulysses and finnegan finnegan's wake as well but a portrait by itself is enough to stamp him as a dexterous user of english what do you mean by dexterous user of english so here it is the dexterous user of english means so uh, he is a vivid writer or a very prominent writer in english and as one aware of the possibilities as well as limitations of the language the subject of novel is conveyed to us both by the surface narration of events and by dialogue as also by a deliberate carefully woven network of verbal associations incorporated into the text the language strives towards a kind of radiance and textual richness and density throughout and there is an exact used tautness and economy about it which is really striking 
the language strives towards a kind of radiance and textual richness okay and density throughout there is exactitude tautness and economy about it which is really striking the best lessons of realism naturalism and symbolism are evidently internalized quite well by joyce and he adds a lot of his own special technique to the cumulative and composite legacy represented by this influencing trends okay so here you can see the best lessons of realism naturalism and symbolism are evidently internalized quite well by joyce and he adds a lot of his own special technique to the cumulative and composite legacy represented by this influencing trends okay variety of styles so what are the styles we will study one of joyce major stylistic achievements in a portrait is the modulation of styles throughout so here it is the modulation of styles throughout modulation of styles as you read the novel you are going to realize that joyce uses a different style in each section to underline each stage of stefan's development each style is meant to present a different stage in stefan's progress towards the final realization of his true vocation the changes in style are deliberately foregrounded or highlighted the novel is set in motion by the formula one would use for stating a fairy tale by a selection and patterning of language joyce is able to mimic the growth of the child's mind okay so not the novel is set in motion by the formula one would use for stating or stating of fairy tale while selection and patterning of language joyce is able to mimic the growth of child's mind once upon a time and a very good time it was there was a macaw coming down along the road and this macaw that was coming down along the road met a nice and little boy named baby tico okay here is the extract of some novel lines you can see and you can write in your exam also once upon a time and a very good time it was there was a macaw coming down along the road and this macaw that was coming down along the road met a nice and little boy named baby tico his father told him that story his father looked at him through a glass he had a hairy face he was baby tico the macaw came down the road where betty barney lived she sold lemon plat Oh the wild rose blossoms on the little green place he sang that song that was his song oh the green oath bothet when you wet the bed first it is warm then it gets cold his mother put on the oil sheet that had the queer smell his mother had a nicer smell than his father she played on the piano the sailors on pipe for him to dance he danced tra la 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 tra la tra la lady tra la 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 tra la 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 the usual narrative links are replaced to a large extent by verbal echoes and associations there is a direct representation of senses and feelings and impressions so here it is very wonderfully portrayed in the a portrait of the artist as a young man james joyce he played the piano and sellers horn pipe that is you can see that is uh, the horn pipe sound tra la 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 tra la lady the usual narrative links are replaced to a large extent by verbal echoes and associations there is a direct representation of senses and feelings and impressions the suggestion of party recitations helps to evoke family life in the parlor okay so the suggestion of party relations helps to evoke the family life in the parlor sensation of wet and dry the sense of a ministering mother and the contrast in the child's mind between father and mother are all introduced here as the child grows the idiom change changes and the range of interest becomes wider okay and the range of interest becomes wider now the language and perceptions are those of a school boy further we come across a mind becoming aware of itself and the and of the body he kept on the fringe of his line out of sight of his pre- prefect out of the reach of the rude fit feigning to run now and then he felt his body small and weak amid the throng of players and his eyes were weak and watery 
okay he kept on he kept on the fringe of his line out of sight of his perfect out of the reach of the rude fit feigning to run now and then he felt his body small and weak amid the throng of players and his eyes were weak and watery the school boys slang now introduced into the novel richly reinforces and enlivens joins rendering of school life okay so you can see he kept on fringe on his line out of sight of his perfect out of the reach of the rude fit feigning to run now and then he felt his body small and weak amid the throng of players and his eyes were weak and watery the school boy slang now introduced into the novel richly reinforces and enlivens joy's rendering of school life so you can see here the the school boy slangs are used now introduced in the novel richly reinforces and enlivens joy's rendering of school life here it is a teenager's life there are words like skirt fake rump stink dog in the basket smoking okay here it is the words you can use in your answer that is a skirt fake rump stink dog in basket smoking and this bring about a subtle alteration in the language amidst twist stiff and gross okay then for the christmas dinner episode we find joyce taking recourse to a dramatic impersonal mode in a sense the world of adults takes over here later the style returns to stephen's subjective view point around the panting incident but the panting is described by way of an intrusion of external reality stephen's thought patterns and the associations of cruel and unfair and the internal monologue that stephen has is pissed at a high level of tension okay so stephen's thought patterns and the associations of cruel and unfair and the internal monologue that stephen has it has his pissed at a high level of tension it is diffused after the interview with the rector okay it is diffused after the interview with the rector the mood now changes to dramatic and the form reflects that okay here it is a cruel and unfair the internal monologue that stephen has his has his pissed at a high level of tension it is diffused after the interview with the rector the mood now changes to dramatic and the form reflects that a detailed cataloging and sampling of the great variety of styles is not possible here okay so let me give you an indication only of some of the broad stylistic shifts mostly considering coinciding with transitions from chapter to chapter the second chapter traces stephen's adolescence from the first awakening of sexuality and is growing isolation from family so here it is the adolescence period arises in stephen's life so stephen's adolescence from the first awakening of sexuality and is growing isolation from family so in the first section of the chapter we find stephen nauseated nauseated with the reality of his life as well as with avenues of escape that are available to him he now thinks of meeting with an idealist woman so here it is a sexuality and a growing isolation from family arises and as a teen as a adult he tries to find out a woman this hope is presented to us in a parody of sentimental romantic fiction the style matches stephen's cultivated posturing and his romantic reading in secret he began to make ready for the great part which he felt awaited him here it is page 64 you are you can see later when stephen roams the back, back streets of dublin brothels district there is subtle change in style as the coarse insistent external reality makes its presence felt in the third chapter the external reality and its grossness take over for a while so you can see here here it is the dublin's brothel district the back streets of dublin brothel district you should memorize the name of the street uh, street name that is back streets of dublin brothel district 
so there is a subtle change in style as the coarse insistent external reality makes its presence felt in the third chapter the external reality and its grossness take over for a while he hoped there would be stew for dinner turnips carrots stop it into you his very counsel dream okay he hoped there would be stew for dinner turnips and carrots stop it into you his very counsel dream when we come to sermons a different kind of rhetoric takes over one example would suffix i pray to god that my poor words may have a may have ever today to confirm in holiness those who are in a state of grace to strengthen the wavering to lead back to the state of grace the poor soul that has strayed if any such be among you i pray to god that my poor words may have ever today to confirm in holiness those who are in state of grace to strengthen the wavering to lead back to the state of grace the poor soul that has strayed if any such be among you i pray to god that my poor words may have ever today to confirm in holiness those who are in state of grace okay i pray to god that my poor words may have ever today to confirm in holiness those who are in a state of grace to strengthen the wavering to lead back to the state of grace the poor soul that has strayed if any such be among you the rhetoric here relies as much on sound as on meaning of for its effect once stephen has confessed the mood changes and the prose reflects the change the muddy streets were gray were gay he strode homeward conscious of an invisible grace pervading and making light his limbs in spite of all he had done it one of the climatic epiphanies in the novel is reprinted by the sight of the wedding girl and its effect on stephen the prose with its buoyancy lives up to the demands of the occasion quite well what do you mean by buoyancy okay so what do you mean by the word buoyancy buoyancy means up and down okay it's the swinging position the prose which its buoyancy lives up to the demands of the occasion quite well heavenly court cried stephen's soul is an outburst of profane joy he turned away from her suddenly and set off across the stand his cheeks were aflame his body was aglow his limbs were trembling on and on and on her strode far out over the sand singing wildly into the sea singing wildly to the sea crying to great crying to great the advent of life that had cried to him her image had passed into his soul forever and no word had broken had broken the holy silence of his ecstasy her eyes had called him and his soul had lived at the call to live to err to fall to triumph to recreate life out of life okay to live to err to fall to triumph to recreate life out of life so here it is you can see how beautifully portrayed in the novel to live to or to fall to triumph to recreate life out of life a wild angel of mortal youth and beauty and envoy from the fair courts of life to throw open before him in an instant of ecstasy the gates of all the ways of error and glory okay throw open before him in an instant ecstasy the gates of all the ways of error and glory The buoyancy of style is reminiscent of the simile used earlier by Joyce to indicate Stephen's state of mind when he and Emma take a tram ride home after the children's party at Harold's Cross. So the buoyancy of style is reminiscent of the simile used earlier by Joyce. The buoyancy of style is reminiscent of the simile used earlier by Joyce to indicate Stephen's state of mind when he and Emma take a tram ride home after the children's party at Harold's Cross. His heart danced upon her movements like a cork upon a tide. Okay? His heart danced upon her movements like a cork upon a tide. In the final section of fourth chapter, the style that takes over is most of the time, exultant, almost riosas. A boisterous energy seems to be driving the language. The cumulative rhetorical effect of the resonances of words come to be of great importance in such a linguistic situation. 
so what is the linguistic situation here it is the main key point the cumulative rhetorical effect okay the cumulative rhetorical effect is found of the resonances of the words come to of great importance in such a lingu linguistic situation in the opening paragraph of the fifth chapter we get taste of joy's great ability handle uncomfortable detail through cataloging and through tight structures of modification okay so in the opening paragraph of the fifth chapter we get a taste of joy's great ability handle uncomfortable detail through cataloging and through tight structures of modification he drained his third cup of watery tea to the dry to the dregs and set to chewing the crust of fried bread that were scattered near him staring into the dark pool of the jar the yellow dripping had been scooped out like a bog hole and the pool under it brought back to his memory the dark turf colored water of the bath in clungos okay here it is a page 188 so all these things you shouldn't remember you only remember one or two lines later in the fifth chapter joy's mastery of dialogue and the dramatic form is strikingly at work in his evocation of life at university college dublin bantering between students is handled with great dexterity okay so here it is the main key point you can see the university college dublin here it is the university college dublin then stephen riches it is a dramatic form with the stinkingly strikingly uh, at work is evocation of life at university of college of dublin bantering between students is handling with great dexterity and there is the same time remarkable warmth and humanity beneath the surface rivalry and world play inunders that the student direct at each other there are an example of the vital sources of native humor we sustain the liveliness of joyous prose throughout his career okay so inunder inunders that the students direct at each other so here you can see inunders that the students direct at each other inunders that the students direct at each other are an example of the vital source of native humor which sustained the liveliness of joyous prose throughout his career one example will surface when lynch has a hearty laugh on something grandly says grandly comes up with lynch is awake so lynch is awake here it is a page 218 you can remember and write down in your answer book so lynch is awake the most notable thing about his linguistic play in the fifth chapter is the stefan tactly tacitly or otherwise is now very much a part of it all his fellow student rude humor ran like a gust through the cloister of stefan's mind shaking into gay life limp priestly vestments that hung up on the walls setting them to sway and caper in a shavat of misrule in response to cranley's words Lynch is awake. Lynch straightens himself and thrusts forward his chest. Stephen's comment on this is, Lynch puts out his chest as a criticism of life. So here it is you can remember, Lynch puts out his chest as a criticism of life. So we can conclude that the variety of styles that we come across in a portrait is quite functional and tailored to the different stages of Stephen's growth. the broad progression of the style is from a kind of interior monologue of the infant through growing objectivity to the adolescent lyricism of the vision of the wedding girl so here you can see the broad progression of the style is from a kind of the interior monologue of the infant through growing objectivity to the adolescent lyricism of the vision of the wedding girl then there is broad humor and finally there are diary jottings that amount to some kind of sort and for the interior monologue from form associated with stream of consciousness and used more extensively in ulysses so here it is repetitions or symbolism okay 
so here you can see the repetition and symbolism so here you can see repetition and symbolism repetition as a stylistic and structural device is used by most modernist writer a portrait also use it quite effectively okay so here it is the repetition and symbolism we will discuss later so okay so please we are read and watch all the videos and i have given all the key points and key notes so keep watching study with master notes so thank you thank you viewers in my next video we will go repetition and symbolism a portrait of the artist as a young man by james stars so thank you thank you viewers